digitalization initiatives, primarily surrounding digital twins, edge computing, and in this case, machine vision-based applications and process quality monitoring using machine learning or AI-based uh, modeling. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to get things started. Okay, so mo the majority of my presentation I'll be going over essentially our machine vision applications that we developed specifically for the machine tool industry. And then towards the end, I'll also go over some uh, what we call process quality monitoring, which is using uh, data coming directly off the machine tool controller instead of necessarily a machine vision system uh, and how you could use machine learning in that use case as well. But to get us started, let's go with the machine vision setup. So we at Siemens have developed our uh, machine vision portfolio to essentially enable workpiece and environment monitoring either in the machine itself, in the machining cell, or really can also be applied in other areas along your production line. Us being focused on the machine tool industry, we're looking more at the machine in the machine cell, but some of these applications and use cases could be applied to more general uh, production lines. Um, we've designed these applications to be uh, user-friendly in the sense that you do not have to be an expert in AI or machine learning to make use of them. And so we're trying to make them uh, easy to use, easy to implement, and easy to make improvements upon once they're deployed. And obviously, the overall goal that we're looking to address using these solutions is reducing either uh, costs to run the machine, costs if you have damage to the machine, or costs to run your parts. By automating your processes, improving your inspection processes within your machines, and improving your overall machine productivity. So as Nasir had alluded to just a minute ago, some of the applications in the machine vision space uh, where you're starting to see machine learning be applied is using these neural network-based systems. So historically, if you're looking, you know, probably 15, 20, 25 years ago at vision systems, a lot of these were really rules-based systems where they weren't all that flexible. And so if you had, you know, products coming through a, a conveyor line and they came in a different configuration or potentially the box where boxes are stacked, like we have in this exam example, they might not be recognized. With machine learning and using that as the basis for your image recognition and the fact that you can break things up into these, you know, bounding boxes like what Nasir just mentioned, we can make these vision systems much more flexible and able to handle various different situations so that they're not so confined. Um, and so that's really kind of enabled machine vision to take off and has garnered uh, quite a bit of interest in the market, as I think we've seen earlier this morning. Okay, so some of the customer challenges we're looking to address using machine vision. Um, really, what I'm trying to show here is the comparison between doing manual inspection versus if you move to a visual, uh, uh, excuse me, an automated optical inspection. So if you're going with the manual route, obviously you're tying up your operators, your employees with having to do that themselves. Um, they're not able to work on more productive tasks and you potentially also miss the traceability because you might not have an automated system for collecting this inspection, inspection data. And if you're not doing these inspections, you're potentially missing out on quality issues. You might produce a bad batch if you have a defect that's becoming present in this batch of products that you're producing. Um, and in a lot of cases, if you are going to set up a machine vision system, it can be a time-consuming, uh, process that requires a technical expert to implement. With our machine or visual machine awareness applications that we as Siemens offers, obviously we're trying to address this machine vision use case and do it in an easy to use manner. So the primary application I'm going to be showing you today, which you'll see on a number of my slides, is called Protect My Machine Setup. Um, and I'll show you exactly what it can do, but it essentially allows you to do workpiece identification, feature-based identification, a variety of different uh, machine vision use cases and tasks. So if you do end up going with you know, these AI-based systems, it's going to allow you to free up your workers to work on higher level tasks. It's going to give you that traceability 
within your uh, production environment because you're going to have this record for each part that's running through and being checked. And it's going to, with Protect My Machine Setup, it's going to allow you to do this in an easy to use, easy to configure manner um, without the high level of techni technical expertise traditionally needed to set up a, a machine vision uh, application. Okay. So getting a bit into the solution architecture for our machine vision portfolio, um, it starts off in our case, uh, our applications can integrate directly with the CNC controller with our Cinemeric CNCs. That's gonna allow us to, eventually, to potentially provide feedback to the machine tool to influence its behavior. But so in, in most of our use cases, you have the machine tool and then we'll have a, an edge device, which is essentially an industrial PC that's going to be running the actual model and processing the data coming in from the camera. Um, so we have the camera connected to the edge device. It's obviously gonna be taking the images and then processing them on the edge device. Whenever you first set up the system and you need to collect your training data, uh, you're gonna collect it using this edge device. That data is then pushed to the cloud, to our cloud platform which is where the training actually takes place for these machine vision models. So once you collect essentially a series of images for or features for what you're trying to uh, monitor or view, it'll be pushed to the cloud. You'll essentially configure, for instance, those bounding boxes like what Nasir had mentioned, and then train essentially with a few clicks, train the model. And then once you have the model trained, that model is then deployed to the edge device, which is running next to the machine. That model can then run continuously. And whenever essentially uh, image capture is triggered by the machine, let's say the workpiece is in a state that it can be scanned or checked, that image is sent to the edge device compared to the model that was generated. And then a one, a report is generated for that monitoring case. And in the case of our cinematic controls, we can provide feedback directly from the edge device back to the machine tool to tell the machine tool potentially, yes, this was a good part, continue machining or unload the part from the work cell. Or it could give essentially, you know, a, uh, an anomaly detection telling the machine, hey, we potentially have a defect with this part. We need further inspection or do not continue machining. Send an operator uh, over to take a look at the part and inspect it before you continue. All right, just a little bit deeper onto kind of some of the technical hardware aspects. Um, in terms of the camera component, this isn't something that we as Siemens uh, ourselves sell directly, um, but in terms of our requirements, that it's pretty flexible. Really the two big requirements are uh, the camera needs to support the RTSP protocol for data transmission. And it's gonna be using an uh, uh, ethernet land-based uh, uh, connection to the edge device. Um, besides that, it's really up to you what camera you want to select and integrate with the device. For us, it's really just an input interface. As I said, once you have your camera installed, you can start training. Uh, you, you can start collecting data to then train your AI models. To actually collect the data, those images are gonna be collected directly on the edge device. Once you have your training data set, those can either be pushed directly from the device to the cloud, or we do also have uh, an offline transfer tool if you don't have direct cloud connectivity from the shop floor, which obviously for a lot of uh, the users we deal with, that's usually not possible. So we do have an ability to essentially download the images offline and then you can push them to the cloud manually. Um, in addition to the images collected directly using the camera with our edge device, we do also support the ability to import data from essentially uh, 3D renderings of your object. So you could use essentially your CAD model to increase the amount of images in your data set to further improve the accuracy of your model that you're generating and make it more robust. So, you know, Nasir mentioned you might need 50 or 100 images. 
if you can't get that many images or if you need a more robust model, you could potentially augment that using this CAD-based data. Once you have the data up in the cloud, uh, it's a few clicks to actually start the model generation process. That process is done using cloud computing resources. And then once the model is generated, that uh, model can then be deployed back down to the edge device is essentially a ready to use solution. At that stage, the model is running on the edge device. Um, sorry. At that stage, the model is actually running directly on the edge device. So you don't have latency issues if you're you know, pushing out to a server cloud-based system. It's essentially right next to the machine tool. It's checking those images then that are coming in and comparing it to the training data set, depending on how you've configured it. And then based on those results, it's gonna generate a report within our applications that can then be uh, accessed and downloaded. And then in the case of our cinematic controls, we can also provide feedback from that monitoring job directly to the machine tool to influence the machine behavior or you know, potentially stop the machine. Okay, so with that in mind, what does the entire closed loop process look like from you know, essentially data collection through to model deployment and execution. Um, so you're gonna be collecting your images using the camera that you install in the machine or in the machine cell, pushing it to the cloud and actually performing the um, model generation, deploying that model down to the edge device and then executing, running that model directly on the edge device connected to the machine tool. Um, and you'll notice on the right-hand side, we have a few different essentially applications where that are making that we are using in this entire uh, closed loop architecture um, directly on the edge device. We have protect my machine setup, which is what I'll be going over in just a minute here. And then we also have another application that we're working on called analyze my workpiece tool check, which is looking primarily at a, uh, the tool condition for the cutters on your machine tool. On the cloud platform, we have managed my AI. That's our solution to actually uh, handle the model generation from the images that you capture using uh, neural network-based machine learning models. And in terms of application scopes, us being machine tools, we're somewhat focused into that realm. So where we are usually applying this is either directly inside the machining space, inside the machine cell, potentially with a robot tender, or there are more general applications where you could apply it to the shop floor. And I'll show you some of those in just a minute here. Um, before I do that, I just wanna do a quick demonstration of how the software actually works once you have the model deployed on the edge device and you're looking to execute it. So it's just a quick video here. And let's see if it's playing. So here we're going to have uh, the system hooked up to one of our Cinemaric CNC controllers. So you can see the CNC on the left-hand side, camera looking at the workpiece in the middle, and then our edge device on the right. So on the right here, she is placed essentially an anomaly or an unknown object in the workspace. And then she tried to start the part program on the machine to essentially start the machining process. During that, uh, we essentially ran the check, detected there was an anomaly, and basically sent out a flag to stop the machine. She now removed the part, started the part program. It ran another check and detected there's no anomaly, nothing unknown present in the machine space, and it proceeds with the part program. So from a high-level perspective, that's how the software is working in terms of its integration with our cinematic controls um, using these machine vision applications. All right. With that in mind, now I'd like to go over some of the use cases that we are primarily targeting with this software. Um, as I mentioned, we're primarily focused on the machine in the machine cell, although there are uh, applications where it could be applied at the shop floor. Most of the use cases that we're looking at are things like workpiece identification, essentially before you load the part into the machine. Um, workpiece verification to make sure that you're gonna run the right pro program based on the part that was loaded by an operator. Um, 
workpiece rotation verification. So if the workpiece comes in and could be in a number of different orientations, you could essentially use that to uh, command, for instance, in the use case I'll show you in a minute, um, a robot arm to orient the part properly once they put it into the fixture in the machine. Um, and then moving outside of the machine to the shop floor, um, we do offer just general workspace monitoring. And then we also support feature-based identification, which you could use to potentially check that all of the components have been installed in a certain uh, uh, in a certain item that you're producing. For instance, making sure you have all the screws and all your plates installed um, on a motor housing. So the first use case, a first use case example I want to go over is actually one that we've deployed at our Bad Neustadt facility in Germany. So in this uh, machining cell, they've got a CNC controller, and they've and obviously that's doing machining and just a milling type operation. Then they also have a, a robot tending machine that's loading the machine with parts. Historically, whenever they have a blister tray come in with a new set of parts. They have had the operator go and have to identify what work pieces are loaded. And they also have to go and identify the orientation of these work pieces. So you'll notice this essentially in the lower quadrant and the far left-hand side quadrant. And these were done obviously manually by an operator, takes a significant amount of time, can potentially be error prone, which could potentially result in a bad batch of parts or potentially even machine damage. Using our Protect My Machine setup application, they did two primary things with, uh, with this machine. The first one they did is workpiece identification in the blister tray. So instead of the operator having to go and specify what part they're running manually in the machine HMI, the uh, machine essentially, the arm has a camera and identifies what workpiece is loaded. And based on that, they're able to select the right program on the machine tool. The second thing they're doing, which is on the left-hand quadrant, is they're making use of an alignment station. So once they've identified the workpiece, the arm is picking it up, placing it in this alignment station, and then they are taking an image of it. And based on that uh, alignment, excuse me, based on the orientation of the uh, workpiece, they're going to make a modification to this, the robot program to adjust how it loads it into the machine so that it's loaded properly in the fixture. In terms of what that actually looks like uh, from an entire, um, excuse me, an entire workflow perspective, uh, here we're showcasing how this was done for the um, workpiece orientation detection. So on the left, with the model training uh, at the top, that's a, an image of the actual camera that they have mounted in the cell. And then the two images with the green and red boxes on the left are training images. So they took this workpiece and they would load it in the four different orientations available. And they would label those orientations once the data was in the cloud um, using bounding boxes. Once you do that and they train the model, they can then deploy that model to the edge device, which is what you can see in the middle. And in the middle, you can essentially activate, you know, monitoring or using that model. And at that stage, it's ready to run. And uh, on the right-hand side with the deployment, then when the robot essentially loads a component into that orientation station, the camera takes an image of it, they compare it to you know, the model that was generated, and it identifies which orientation that workpiece is in. Once it's been identified uh, what orientation it is, the arm picks it up, rotates it the proper amounts that can be loaded properly and places it into the fixture in the work cell so they can st then start machining. Um, so that's one of the applications where we've applied our machine vision applications ourselves. Okay. Um, so I'm not, it's, this is essentially what I was showing you before in terms of a uh, the other use case, which was workpiece identification. 
So in this case, with that blister tray with these different motor housings that are loaded, uh, they are essentially taking an image of it once that blister tray shows up to identify what workpiece this is so that it can run the right program on the machine tool. Um, and with this, they were able to you know, reduce the amount of manual labor required and see a total of 16% uh, overall cycle time savings within this uh, machine cell. Um, one of the other use cases that we can address, and this is one that might not be necessarily specific to machine tools, is we can do feature-based identification. And based on that, uh, uh, produce output in terms of identifying you know, what part this is that you're producing. So if you look on the right-hand side of this screen, we've got this electric motor housing with a number of different features that we've identified. And based on these different features, it will produce output telling you if, if this is motor X, Y, or Z that is currently loaded or you're currently dealing with. Um, so we can use essentially that feature-based uh, uh, identification um, to check your parts. Um, Somewhat similar, we can follow a multi-step verification process. So if you've got multiple assembly steps to put together a component, for instance, we've got this motor housing with the stator and the rotor, um, as well as the actual axis itself, we can do a number of checks in sequence. So in this case, it's uh, three or four checks in total. And if all of them are completed, you essentially get the green light to continue your process or move on to the next step. If not, you can have an anomaly generated, basically identify you know, the user or operator. Hey, looks like we missed a step. We need to go back, take a look at this part and potentially reassemble. Um, and then the uh, one other use case is essentially just uh, part verification when the part is loaded. So in the case, you know, if you don't have necessarily a robot tending the machine cell, if you still have operators manually loading it, um, you could use the camera to verify that the correct part is loaded for the part program that they're about to run. So once the operator loads the part into the fixture and hits cycle start, you could have the camera essentially take a screen, a snapshot, identify this is part number one, two, three, and if the part program is for part one, two, three, you continue, you proceed with machining. If not, you throw an alarm and notify the operator so they can go and check and remove that piece and then replace it with the proper one or change the part program that they're running. And then the last one, which I had kind of gone over in more detail earlier, this is the work piece uh, rotation. Uh, verification. So in this case, we've got, uh, they're loading these bearing plates into this fixture that they've set up and just identifying the orientation that they're in. And based on that, the robot arm is adjusting the orientation of those bearing plates whenever they're loaded into the machine cell. So instead of the operator potentially having to do that manually or having to adjust the robot programming, we're able to do this on the fly using the live data on your shop floor. So with that in mind, some of the primary customer benefits, uh, specifically with our Siemens solutions to machine vision, are going to be one, in the case of our Cinemeric CNCs, uh, built-in monitoring and integration with our controls. So we can essentially send feedback directly to the CNC without extensive integration work. Um, we have a closed loop workflow from you know, image capture to data augmentation with 3D CAD models uh, to the training pipeline to deployment, all built into one ecosystem to allow you to easily generate these models and address a number of different use cases, depending on what you're doing. And then, like I said, we're trying to make the software in, you know, in machine vision available to the everyday user. So they don't have to be a machine learning expert um, and they don't have to uh, spend, you know, a significant amount of time to get a model up and running. So you're able to use these kind of out of the box, uh, this out of the box solution 
able to use synthetic data to augment the training data that they're using and make use of our built-in workflows to hopefully make it easy to deploy and easy to use and easy to update. So that's all I had on the machine vision side of the fence. Um, before I close things out, I did want to touch just briefly on another area where we operate where you're, there could be machine learning or AI-based applications. This is in the realm of process quality monitoring. So this also makes use of our edge computing device. But in this case, instead of a camera being connected to it necessarily, we're just getting process data directly off the control. So this is primarily data like encoder positions, motor loads, um, contour deviations, basically process variables. And with some of our applications, uh, by default, how they work is you collect your training data set and it generates essentially a Six Sigma based uh, statistical model, which if you look in the middle here under item number two, it essentially ends up looking like a tolerance band for your process signal. So this could be the load on your spindle that you're monitoring. And, and so if you then stay inside that process band when you're running that part in the future, you get a thumbs up, good report. If you run outside of that band, you essentially get an anomaly generated, thumbs down, report generated for that. And that feedback can be sent to the machine tool to trigger you know, a machine stoppage or an alarm for the operator. Um, by default, we do this with that Six Sigma base, just a statistical model. However, we've recently come out with this custom algorithm executor, which allows you to uh, deploy your own essentially models or algorithms to the data that's coming in. So you're still getting this high quality, high speed data telling you how your processes are operating. But instead of just being stuck using a statistical model, you could use your own Python scripts, which you could uh, uh, develop using machine learning algorithms to compare using a machine learning generated model rather than a statistical model. Um, and so it's going to allow you to you know, develop your own use cases. And if you are you know, very much going down the road of machine learning, it can give you a potentially more robust monitoring solution than something that might just be based on statistical analyses. And with, a, with this process quality monitoring software, really the benefits that you're going to see is one, uh, we're using this software essentially with every single part you produce. So instead of intermittent checks where you're maybe you know, running CMM on one out of every 50 parts, we're running these uh, monitoring processes on every single part running through the machine. Uh, with that in mind, if you do detect a quality anomaly, we're going to de detect it quickly so that you potentially don't produce a whole bad batch of parts. And then last but not least, uh, with the application, it includes report generation and storage. So you're going to have full traceability uh, for your machining processes. So you could go back and interrogate the data at a future time if you want or need. And with that, I think I'll uh, close things out. Any questions? Do you need to have a Siemens CNC controller on your machine to put this on, on your machine tool? Uh, on your machine tool? No, the, the limitation there is we wouldn't be able to provide direct feedback to the CNC. So we would still be able to um, essentially produce results. We would then need to send those results to, I would imagine, a, basically a, a third PC to basically send that signal back to some other CNC controller. You, know, you can still run all of these. The only thing you don't get is that direct reporting back to the CNC, which is usually essentially like a thumbs up, thumbs down type response. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. As a um, solutions consultant, I would imagine the interface with the the, the customer's existing equipment uh, or IT um, system would be a big challenge or one of the major challenges that that you're facing. So, two two phase question for like milling machines: Is there a protocol that um, plug and play for your piece of equipment? So yeah, I would assume maybe that that's the case, but 
for older equipment, do you offer a uh, some type of retrofit interface for that? So that's on the milling machine side. Uh, for you know less sophisticated systems like something uh, an older milling machine that might have compressed air that's blowing the the chips off of the um, off of the part and maybe sensing that and only allowing the the compressed air to um, exist when the chips are needed to be blown off. Um, do you offer some kind of solution for that? less sophisticated approach. So really two two questions there. Plug and play retrofit for the more sophisticated machines and any solution for the, the less sophisticated type applications. Yeah, so I, I think I definitely understand your first question and I believe I understand the second one. In the case of you know more advanced or newer milling machines, in the case of our Cinemaric controls, like I said, it's, it's plug and play. Um, because we're at Siemens and we have access to those interfaces, we can essentially just plug directly in. Um, so yes, it's plug and play. If you're looking back at machine tools, typically manufactured from like 2014 to newer from Siemens, it's uh, plug and play. Um, in the case of other controls, kind of to the first question that came up, um, as an example, one way that you could accomplish this is on that edge device, we can run an OPCUA server. So what we could do is tie the output of the vision application, you know, telling you if it's a good or bad report to a tag on that OPCUA server. And then you could have an OPCUA client either running on another machine tool or another PC to monitor that tag, check the state, and then, you know, interface with your other machine tools on the shop floor to tell them, you know, continue machining or stop, which I believe would also potentially address the use case of triggering blowing uh, out the chips if you detect that. 